guys, it's Kayla and Jim and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. Today we are going to talk about the long-awaited, highly anticipated oh top 10 U.S. landfalling hurricanes, but we want to do something a little different this I'm time. Switching it up this time. Because it's 2021, we decided not to do 10, mm -mm. not to do 15, mm -mm. not even 20, mm -mm. but 21 of the top hurricanes to impact the United States. Getting 11 more than if we did the top 10. That's right. But before we get started, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe down below so you never miss another Meteorology Monday. So we went ahead and did a little research and we found a video from the Weather Channel. We're not sure the exact time frame, but we do know it's after Sandy, but before some of the other 20 teens. So if we go with that, we're looking at their top 10 and their top 10 basically, they took a look at parameters such as the death toll, injuries, cost, minimum pressures, maximum Maximum wind speeds, etc., etc., etc. So what we decided to do was take a look at their list, and being 2021, we looked at things even after that time frame, and we used two criteria. Number one, we took their list and we categorized it uh, or, or ranked them in terms of the number of deaths, and then we did the same 10 storms, ranking them in order of cost yep. and we made sure that the costs were the 2021 uh, equivalent equivalent yes. yeah. so we that it was counted for inflation that's right so that's equivalent across the board with that said there were some things that were really surprising as to sure. how they ranked them yeah and i'm sure that they've got their reasons yeah. and again we're going to state it right here basically what we're doing is we're focusing on hurricanes that made landfall in the US so if it if it hit the Bahamas ahead of time if it hit Cuba ahead of time if it hit Puerto Rico if it hit Mexico and then came up we're not including yeah. those countries we're only including the United States so we took a look and we're kind of like well there's been some that have occurred since this video came out uh, from the Weather Channel then we got to our 10 and we were like well you know but what about some of these other storms that you hear about and so we were like well let's expand the list so we went ahead and expanded it to we got to 20 and then we decided, you know what? Let's do one more. Let's just throw one more in. <laughs> because we arranged it and we're like, all right, we'll chop off the bottom one. But we saw the bottom one and we're like, we gotta do it. We're gonna do 21. So we have our list of 21. Again, we took each one and ranked them according to number of deaths. And then the same hurricanes ranked them according to cost. So then what we did in order to get our top 21 in the order that we think was best, we kind of equated 50% to one, 50% to others. So yeah. if a storm ranked number four on this list and number two on this list, we said, okay, fourth place plus second place is six, divide by two, took the average, so that would be three. So it would be third place on our overall list. All right, here we go. So we're gonna start from the bottom and work our way up to the top. Number 21. Hurricane Rita, 2005. Hurricane Rita had seven deaths in total and $14.5 billion in damages. Coming in at number 21, that's already quite a lot of damage and a, a good amount of deaths for the bottom of our list. Yeah, yeah really. This is 21. How many 21. hurricanes we had in, in the course of recorded yeah. history. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty impressive off the bat here. Number 20. Hurricane Charlie in 2004 where it had 10 deaths and $15 billion in damage. Moving on up there. Now we actually experienced Hurricane Charlie. That's right. We were on the outer edge. We were living in Central Florida, East Central Florida at the time. Yep. And everyone kept telling me, what's it gonna do? What's it gonna do? I actually went out and mowed the lawn that day. You did. <laughs> and then- I said, it ain't gonna hit us. We're gonna be fine. And then it, it did end up knocking out our power. And then we lit candles. It was midnight and we sat around in the living room playing Trouble by Candlelight <laughs> until like 2 a.m. That's right, that's right. So other than just having the power go out, we made it through no problem at all. Number 19. Hurricane Hazel, 1954. Hurricane Hazel had 95 deaths and $3.8 billion in damages. A few more deaths, but a lot less damage compared to the other ones so far. That's right. Number 18. Hurricane Matthew, 2016, with a total of 47 deaths and $18.6 billion in damages. Number 17. The 1935 Labor Day Hurricane. 
This one caused 408 deaths and was only $110 million in damages. Now that one hit the Florida Keys, I believe. Yeah. So that long ago wasn't a lot of population and the costs were much, know, lower, back much then. lower back then, but still equating for 2021. But yeah, I mean, that very, very impressive. And yeah. we've heard some stories about how people were stuck and, oh man, that's just, yeah, it's a kind of Ugh. like really sad and devastating story. Actually. Yeah, it is. It is. So <laughs> the, the maybe maybe we'll do a case study on this down the road. But um, yeah, some one. of these some of these hurricanes, just folks give their stories, and it's just really interesting to hear what they yeah. went through. Number sixteen, Laura in twenty twenty with forty seven deaths and nineteen billion dollars in damages. Getting into more recent years here. This one was just last year. That's right. Number 15. Wilma, 2005. Wilma had 23 deaths and $21 billion in damages. Yeah, and that one, I think that one impacted South Florida, right? And it was, it came across South Florida awesome, and we had, <laughs> moved by then so we moved we in the middle impacted. of 2005 we were like get us out of here <laughs> but we did still have you know friends and family that lived down there and they were impacted so even though we weren't there we were still getting the phone calls hey what is this doing and we were keeping up with okay you know get prepared number 14 hurricane agnes in 1972 and agnes had 119 deaths and 13.6 billion dollars in damage so again, cost is kind of low, but the deaths, mainly flooding, they're starting to rank up there. That's right, that's right. The impacts, as Agnes had moved up into the Appalachian area, it, it just started causing a lot of flooding events yep. in, in the mid-Atlantic area, and you know, the deaths and, and costs started racking up there for this hurricane. Number 13. The 1926 Great Miami Hurricane. This one had 372 deaths, but only cost 1.6 billion. Now, the interesting thing from the Weather Channel on this one is if this hurricane were to hit the exact same spot at the exact same speed all over again, it would cause $164 billion in damages, making it the top most costliest. And if it had the same damage, I know that since 1926 up until now, building codes have changed yeah. and stuff. But if they had the same building codes, in 1926 as they do now, and that hurricane rolled over the same area with a much higher population, the cost would be 164, and the death toll would definitely be much higher than yeah. that too. Yeah. Number 12. Hurricane Andrew in 1992, which basically went over the same area roughly. It was almost a repeat <laughs> of the Great Miami Hurricane. <laughs> That's right, and Hurricane Andrew had 15 deaths and $26.5 billion in damage. Number 11. Hurricane Michael in 2018. This one had 16 deaths and $25 billion in damages. Yeah, that one impacted us directly. Okay, so we leave Florida, right? <laughs> Safe from hurricanes, move outside Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, here in the Piedmont, we don't get hurricanes. This one had other plans. We had a tree fall on our house. <laughs> a big oak tree fall on our house and it did $55,000 worth of damage. So, so part of that $25 billion. <laughs> 55K, right? <laughs> and now we're moving into the top 10. Number 10. Hurricane Camille, 1969. Very well known to people yep. my age and older, and especially those that lived in the Gulfport, Mississippi area in Louisiana and southern part of Alabama. Boy, that was a devastating hurricane. Cat 5, very strong winds, very high storm surge. Yep. It was the highest storm surge in recorded US history prior to yep. Katrina. It set the bar pretty high for many years before Katrina came. With Camille, we had 250 deaths and $9 billion in damages. Number nine. Hurricane Ivan, 2004. 92 deaths and $19 billion in damages. Now, as we're starting to get into the top 10 here, you'll notice where we've kind of diverged from the Weather Channel. Ivan did not make their list. No, it did not. And again, not 100% on what their criteria was, but right. Ivan did occur at the time when they produced their video. Yep. So not exactly sure why Ivan didn't make it, but that's okay. We took a look and 
found, you know, based on number of deaths, based on the cost, it ranked pretty high on our list. Yeah. Number eight. Hugo in 1989. Now this one is obviously living in the Carolinas for a number of years. It's a big a one A lot for us. of people talk about Hugo. A lot of people talk Can't about Hugo. Can't go to the beach without hearing about Hugo. Nope, that just roared on shore. I remember watching the Weather Channel and I remember seeing this thing just buzzsawing its way right toward Charleston, South Carolina. Incredible. Crazy. In fact, they said that uh, even well inland, like Charlotte, North Carolina, had yeah. winds to 70 miles an hour, knocking down so many trees and there was tons of power outages. So if I remember correctly, I think it came on shore at max wind speed about 140, 140 miles an hour with higher gusts. And still it kept its strength because it was moving along. I think it was a forward moving speed at 26 miles an hour. It was so booking it. it was just a buzzsaw right through South Carolina and right up into Charlotte and, and yep. on Northwest and, and North. Incredible, incredible. Yep. So with Hugo, we had 86 deaths and 20 24 billion dollars in damage. Number seven. The 1900 Galveston, Texas hurricane with 12,000 deaths and 1.1 billion dollars in damages. Now this one is definitely the most deaths on the list. I think it's like the most deaths ever. An absolutely incredible hurricane. Definitely one that would be great for a case study as well. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. They didn't have any warning. They knew that there was a hurricane coming when the hurricane was there. Yeah. <laughs> like the eye made landfall and they were like, oh look, a hurricane. Yeah, by then the surge was was definitely covering everything at it's that It's an point. island, I mean. I think they said the highest point was 8.6 or 8.7 feet above sea level, and the water was at least, Over you know. 12 feet. Yeah, 12, 15 feet above sea level at that point. So there was no place for these folks to go. Mm -hmm. you can't evacuate at that point, because, you know, trying to get it's to the mainland, there. you know, the winds are already up. If the bridges weren't even washed out yet, I mean, yeah. you're stuck on this island. And so, yeah, up to 12,000 people. That's a third of the population at that time. Incredible. Number six. The Great New England Hurricane of 1938. This again set a bar yep. for not really having much warning. There was some reports that people were out in the afternoon and didn't know. <laughs> and, and this just came in so fast. Yeah. So the number of deaths with the Great New England Hurricane was about 600 people and $18 billion in damage. We are getting up to our top five. Here we go. Number five. The 1928 Okeechobee Hurricane with 3,000 deaths and $16 billion in damages. This was another incredible story of storm surge and flooding. People were, were, were living their lives preparing for the hurricane and then like similar to Katrina, you know, mm -hmm. where all of a sudden a levee breaks or something along that line and now you got all this flooding that's occurring and people got nowhere to go. And unfortunately, this was one of those cases with yep. Lake Okeechobee. Number four. Hurricane Ike, 2008, with 103 deaths and $37 billion in damage. Now you might notice that those numbers are kind of high up there, both yeah. deaths and costs, and it did not make the Weather Channel list. I'm not sure why they didn't include Ike, but it's very interesting. Yeah. Number three. Hurricane Harvey. Would you have expected Harvey? Comment below. <laughs> Hurricane Harvey 2017, 106 deaths and $138 billion in damages, tying another hurricane for the costliest hurricane and natural disaster in U.S. history. And if you want to know which one that is, stick around. Stick around. Because we're the list. getting to our top two coming up. Number two. You might have guessed this one, maybe not, but here it is Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Sandy, 2012, 147 deaths and $59 billion in damage. Big mess in the mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. New York, the entire subway system was flooded. The way the orientation of that hurricane was, Just came and the in coastline, perfectly. pressure was low enough, winds were strong enough out of the right direction and just pushed all that water up yep. against New Jersey and, and into New York. and. It just caused so much flooding. Very, very memorable storm. Absolutely incredible and costly as well. It definitely earns its place. That's right. <laughs> definitely earns its place on the list. That's right. And it was a hurricane and it kind of took on some extra tropical characteristics yeah. and it gave a little bit different it was like meteorological a spin. Kinda, 
to it. Yeah, yeah uh, another perfect example, The Perfect Storm, that we did a case study on in a movie review of, very similar to Sandy. And here we go, number one. And what could it possibly be? Hurricane! Da da da! Katrina. Who's surprised? Raise your hand, nobody's <laughs> raising their hand. Yeah, Hurricane Katrina. 2005, 1,800 deaths and tied with Hurricane Harvey at $138 billion in damages. That's right. I think out of all the hurricanes that we've listed, that's probably one of the top ones most people remember. Yep. And even though it is 15 plus years later, its impacts and the changes that cities will make, it's definitely driving those changes. Yeah, I mean, it was a tragic and terrible event, obviously, but a great learning experience of you know how to move forward technologically with holding back bodies of water and you know putting up sea walls and trying to take preventative measures in construction and building for if a hurricane were to hit a certain area. That's right and I believe that was the catalyst to start thinking about from the National Hurricane perspective and other organizations to increase the warning time because back in the day it used to be 36 hours in advance was when they'd issue a watch. 24 hours in advance when they issue a warning. And I think now they've bumped it up to 48 hours for the watch, 36 hours for the warning to give more people time to evacuate. Because cities like New Orleans, you know, Miami, they need a lot longer lead time Galveston. to evacuate. Yeah. Exactly, I think back in 2005, they even talked about New Orleans needed 72 hours to evacuate. Yeah. And back then the criteria, I think it was 24 hours for the warning. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, but it's better than it's what it was there. before. Absolutely. They've done a pretty good job over the years improving and then trying to warn the public and, and get everyone's safety as best as they can. So there you have it, our top 21 hurricanes in the order that we put it in. You've seen what the Weather Channel has for their top 10. Now, as you guys saw, we didn't do a deep dive into, you know, the pressure and the category and where it hid and all that stuff. We just kind of gave a brief overview. So if there's one on this list that stands out, definitely comment it below if you'd like us to do a case study on it. And if there's some hurricanes that that maybe, you know, like, oh, this was number two. I thought it would be like number 27 or, or why is this even on the list? Or, oh, you forgot about this one. Definitely talk about that in the comments too. This is an open discussion. You just saw our list and our criteria for doing it. You've seen the Weather Channel one. Let us know your thoughts. As always, if you like what you saw, again, Give us a thumbs up and subscribe down below. It helps us out a ton. If you want to follow more of our weather adventures, check us out on Facebook and Instagram, popping up here. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And may none of the hurricanes from 2021 be added to this list. Welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. My voice cracked halfway through that. <laughs>